Hey photographer, Jessica Whitaker here. And in this video, we are going to be doing a good old fashioned Q and A. Am I vaccinated? Absolutely yes, I am vaccinated with Pfizer. And amazing news, the FDA recently granted full approval status to the Pfizer's COVID vaccine, which up until now had only been authorized for emergency use. This means that the Pfizer vaccine is now approved for everybody 16 and older. Now, according to the KFF, three in 10 adults are still not vaccinated even though they are eligible for the COVID vaccine. If you have not gone and vaccinated and you have the opportunity to do so, please go ahead and get the vaccine. Switching gears, let's get into a photography question that I am asked most frequently and in this Q&A, it was no exception. How should you price your photography services? Pricing is so personal. There are so many different variables. Pricing though can begin with doing a cost of doing business, which I have a free tool for. I will link down below. In this spreadsheet, you will be able to lay out and determine all of your expenses for your business, both variable and fixed, so that you know exactly how much money you are spending on your business, spending in your personal life, and how much you are actually making from your sessions after taxes are taken out. This will give you the groundwork to determining how much you should start charging for an hourly rate and for a minimum rate. And then from there, you can build out your packages. I teach everything that you need to know about pricing your photography in my online workshop, which is now closed for enrollment. But for those interested, you can get on the wait list by going to jessicawhitaker.co slash workshop. Will I ever move back to New York City? So for those who don't know, I lived in New York in 2017 to 2019 and 2017 was actually when I launched my photography business full time. Up until then, I was doing freelance work. I was doing a lot of consulting. I was also working in house as a social media director and I held a job in e-commerce for eight years. So in 2017 is when I took that calculated leap of faith to go full time in my photography business. It took patience and planning. And for those interested, and learning how you can go part-time to full-time in photography, I will have a video linked on the iCards above of eight things to do before you go full-time in your business. The answer though is yes, I do see myself moving back to New York City eventually. I don't see it happening for another two years or so. I'm currently living in Seattle and I do plan to be back someday soon. Should I have separate Instagram profiles for my photography business and for my personal life? There so many different variables to this. I believe I even have a full Build and Bloom podcast episode on this topic, but my answer in short, generally speaking, would be yes. If you're gonna have a personal account, keep it private, keep it completely personal so that clients and your audience are not confused on which to follow. Keeping it separate is also going to be the easiest thing for you when you are first starting out in your business. There's not gonna be as much pressure to share on both accounts. I would rather you taking the time that you would spend balancing the two and putting that into the back end of your business. The next question is about college and do I regret going to college? Before I answer, I want to share that I have a very detailed podcast episode all about college and the importance of getting a college education if you have the opportunity that I did with one of my most amazing friends, Andrea Pons. If you resonate with this question, or you are thinking about going back to school, or you are deciding if you want to even pursue a college education whatsoever, do yourself the favor and listen to this amazing interview and what Andrea has to say. The answer is, no, I do not regret going to college. It took me three years in three different schools to complete my AA degree. I went to community college all throughout. I highly, highly recommend community college. You learn more in college than just the classes you take. You expand your social circle. You learn how to work with different personality types. You learn about accountability and time management. Going to college and getting a job outside of working for yourself, whether that's in retail, customer service, working at a bar, working at a coffee shop, 
workshop. These are things that are going to benefit your development and growth. Please take the time to go and listen to the Build and Bloom podcast episode that I did with Andrea Pons all about college education, and she also shares ways to get scholarships if you cannot afford the full or complete tuition. We're going to end with two questions about photography. So number one would be the best beginner cameras and lenses. And this is a question that has actually just been asked to me in Instagram DMs almost every single day. So I actually have two guides on this topic. Number one, I have a free PDF download guide that is all of my top recommendations for cameras for beginners. Now I have different price points and depending on the goal that you want, whether you just want a simple camera to shoot for your business or for family vacation, or you want a camera that will grow with you, I have it in this detailed guide as well as price points and cheaper alternatives. And then the next guide is in video format and it is my three camera lenses. Now, if you're interested in that video, it will be linked in the iCard here. And then that camera guide download will be linked in the description box below. Will you upgrade from your D DSLR to mirrorless. Oh my goodness. This question I have answered a couple different times. I've answered it in my 5D Mark IV versus R5 behind the scenes video. I've also answered it in a recent vlog and the answer is most likely no. I shoot with a Canon 5D Mark IV and I absolutely love it. I love it for shooting photo and for shooting video. I had the opportunity to compare the Mark IV against Canon's R5, which is one of their new mirrorless cameras. And while I fell in love with the R5, the price point of getting the RF lens, which is the lens that is specifically created for their mirrorless camera, was about $6,000. and. I would still be curious to try one of the EF lenses with the R and see with an adapter if I'm still happy with the result, but that price point right now is not realistic for me to spend money on. It doesn't financially make sense when I have a perfectly good DSLR. I am all about using wisdom when it comes to financial decisions with my technology. With the photography industry and tech in general, we are constantly told by marketing that we need the latest and greatest to have a successful business when that is simply not true. Gear is an important part in our business, but consider spending that money somewhere else before upgrading if you have a perfectly good DSLR. However, I share all of my thoughts about when I think that kind of upgrade would make sense and even more in detail on why I'm not upgrading, but maybe when I will in the video where I compare the Mark IV against the R5, it's at the very end of the video. It's a big chit chat, but I think it is necessary and I think it can help a lot of people who are also in this position of if they should upgrade or not. Whenever you have any kind of photography questions related to gear or posing, I want you to go into the Build and Bloom Photography Facebook group and share it there. My Build and Bloom Photography group is kind, encouraging, inclusive, and it's free to join. I will have it linked down below or you can just search Build and Bloom in Facebook group. Be sure to hit subscribe so that you're the first to know when new free tutorials for your business come out. I'll see you over in my next video, eight things to do before you go from part-time to full-time in your photography business.